Guys, Doug here from Motion Raceworks with another episode of Motion 360. This is episode three in the series, and today we're gonna keep it short, but talk about a very important topic, and that is turbo oil drains. I'll keep it short and sweet because, uh, to be honest, I just don't have a whole lot of time today, but I do wanna make sure I deliver on my promise to bring a new video every day. So anyways, I'm here in the garage putting the new Precision Turbo Gen 2 7675 ball bearing turbos uh, on the Nova and we're gonna turn this thing up this year. And uh, I kind of came up with uh, another little tip that I've learned the hard way over the years. I used to do wrong, so I'm not immune to it. And I thought it would be very beneficial for everybody as everybody's kind of uh, assembling their cars for the last time or just assembling stuff in general. And if I can save you money and save you a burn up turbo, uh, I feel like I won this whole episode here. So here you see our new billet wheel 7675 Gen 2s. This thing is going to be a monster with these turbos. So I plan to do some more turbo oiling uh, videos in the future because it seems to be a big question. And to be honest, there's a lot of uh, content and a lot of details that go into it. But today we're just going to talk about one topic and that's turbo oil drains. Um, there's a bazillion people on the market making different turbo oil drains, and that's fine. Um, I, To be honest with you, one isn't better than the other in most instances, um, but there's one important part to it. So every turbo has basically this exact same standard oil drain. It's got a square hole, um, two bolts, and it takes a flange like this, which we sell at Motion Raceworks. Now, most applications, whether it's T4, T5, T6, um, even some of the Pro Mod stuff, well, the Pro Mod stuff uses Dash 12 mostly. Um, almost always you're going to run a Dash 10 return. That's typically always sufficient for a turbocharger. Um, it gives you a lot of leeway, especially if it's well gravity fed, um, to get oil out. So if you have an engine that makes too much pressure, it will typically take care of that problem and not cause a seal issue. Um, there's a lot of other things that go into seals. We won't um, get into the weeds on that today, but this is a pretty standard piece. Uh, Dash 10 um, AN oil return line. If you're running anything smaller than that, I highly suggest you upgrade. If you're running a big turbo, a lot of times they're Dash 12, but for the far majority of us, my customers um, and the typical customer, a Dash 10 is sufficient. So here is your typical, I got new parts, I'm excited. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this package open. I'm gonna grab my parts out of this thing. Cool, throw the package over there. Time comes around tomorrow, the next day, next week. Definitely four months later, you're like, oh shit, I don't have a gasket. So what does every red-blooded American do? You just bust out the RTV, the red RTV, just like people do on everything, and you put RT, big old glob of RTV on there, bolt that thing down, and you go about your way. I'm here to tell you that's the wrong move. Everybody thinks they put the right amount of RTV on something, and you might be thinking, Doug, I put a bunch on there, sealed, no leaks, all set. Not the case. What happens is you put it around the edge, and then by the time you compress this thing, to say 20 foot pounds, you now have RTV that is taking up 50, 60, 70% of the drain, and you're now gonna have a clogged orifice. And that's your best case scenario with RTV. Your worst case scenario is that you get a chunk of RTV that comes loose, goes through the drain, and then goes into your oil pan, gets stuck in your pickup, burns your motor up, um, or a bunch of pieces. The other problem is once you start to block that, now the oil can't get out of the turbo fast enough. And when oil can't get out of the turbo fast enough, it's gonna take the path of least resistance. So basically, at that point, you're gonna have oil shooting out the intake seal, or the compressor seal, the turbine seal. You're gonna call me and say, man, this turbo I got from you is bunk, man. And it doesn't matter what brand. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I'm a big precision fan but all the brands get blamed because of this. Um, more times than not, faulty. 
Uh, again, we'll go into that in another uh, story, but there's a lot of good turbo manufacturers out there and a lot of the failing, um, the problems with them come from using the wrong parts, using the wrong oil and stuff, miss size, and so on and so on. Um, so this one's a big culprit for blame. So anyways, what you're gonna wanna do is go find this seal. See this little green seal we send out in all of our turbo drains? and most manufacturers do, find this seal, use no RTV, it's a felt seal, and use that, no more RTV. Again, if you can't find this seal, on every Precision Turbo, there's a new one taped to the box. We have these on our website for sale by themselves. Use this, save yourself some heartache, save me the phone call, save oil out your exhaust, save a broken turbo, save hurting your motor. This little tiny seal makes all the difference. So guys, thanks for tuning in for another episode of Motion 360. I sure hope that this helps some people out with their builds. I know there were people about to make the mistake of putting RTV on there. So if you thought this was useful and helpful for you and your program, please like, comment, share, and subscribe on YouTube and Facebook. We appreciate you tuning in. Stay tuned, there's more to come.